Hello, this is Christian Holcher again. I am telling you about an interesting clinical trial testing the diabetes drug uroglutide in people with Alzheimer's disease. So liraglutide is one of these drugs that are on the market for treating diabetes or weight loss, uh, also known as Victosa or Saxenda on the market. It's part of the GLP-1 class of diabetes drugs, uh, similar to Ozempic. And in my previous studies, I could show that liraglutide is actually protective in animal models of Alzheimer's disease. And on the basis of that, we were able to get funding to test liraglutide in a phase two trial in people with Alzheimer's disease. So this is the clinical study design. There were 204 people with Alzheimer's. It was a double blind placebo controlled study. So double blind means nobody knew who was getting what. The patients didn't know it. The nurses didn't know it. The doctors didn't know it. <coughs> then half of the patients received liraglutide, the other a placebo just to see what happens if the people do not get the drug. The study took a year. The primary outcomes were memory and cognition. So there are standard test batteries that people use for clinical trials. Then we measured the uptake of glucose into the brain with the brain scans and MRI brain scans to measure the volume of the brain and the shrinkage. So in the memory tests, uh, you can see that at the beginning, uh, both groups did not score in the same way, unfortunately. And the patients are allocated to the groups in a random way, as you have to. But unfortunately, sometimes that means that the groups are not really identical. So the liraglutide group, shown in red, didn't score as well on these memory tests than the placebo group. However, when they were retested six months later, they were identical. And then six months after that, the drug group now was better than the placebo group. In the MRI scans to measure the volume of the brain, we could see that the drug reduces brain shrinkage, which is part of the disease. And the reduction is actually quite profound, as you can see here. These are some examples of brain areas that are affected by Alzheimer's disease. And the shrinkage is really reduced by a lot. The FDG PET brain scans didn't show a difference between groups in glucose uptake into the brain. So in conclusion, uh, the test showed that liraglutide did slow down disease progression. That is actually quite impressive because it's a quite a small study and we don't really see improvements like this in 99.9% .9 of clinical trials. And the, the phase three trials that show a difference, they have uh, like close to 2,000 patients and they go on for two years in order to show a statistical difference. And here we already saw it in a small group of patients. So this is really good news. Brain shrinkage was much reduced. Uh, this is believed to be driven by the loss of neurons in the brain. Uh, the cortex is getting thinner. Uh, the overall brain volume goes down. So it's good that the drug can reduce this. So this is really a proof of concept to just show that these drugs can have a meaningful effect. Uh, this is actually the very first phase two trial testing a GLP-1 type drug in patients with Alzheimer's disease. 
And liraglutide is an old drug now. Yeah? The, the industry is not interested in this anymore. Patent life is over. And we know it's not an ideal drug. It doesn't enter the brain very well. So we really need to develop better drugs that can cross the blood-brain barrier and see if they are doing a better job. So yes, this was actually funded by charities, yeah, not by drug companies. And I just want to thank the charities for funding this, the Alzheimer's Society in the UK and the ADDF in the US and Imperial College London, where most of the studies had been conducted. Then there is another study that has been published where people looked at patients that are taking liraglutide to treat diabetes. And then they just followed them up to see how many of these patients develop Alzheimer's disease. So they looked at a patient data bank in the US and looked at people who took liraglutide and compared them to another group that took DPP-4 inhibitors, which is another group of drugs on the market to treat diabetes. So 1,260 patients on drug, liraglutide, and 15,950 on the DPP-4 inhibitors. And these people had diabetes, but they didn't have Alzheimer's. Uh, so in the follow-up, they then wanted to see how many developed Alzheimer's disease. Here's the result. And you can see that uh, at the beginning for a year, they followed these patients and they didn't develop Alzheimer's disease. Then in the second year, there was an increase of numbers that had been identified. And then in the third year, this goes up even further. So you can see that the numbers of patients that developed Alzheimer's disease is lower in the liraglutide group and higher in the DPP-4 group. Uh, so there is a clear protective effect. So liraglutide seems to be better in reducing the risk of developing AD compared to the older drugs, the DPP-4 inhibitors. There was no control group, unfortunately, so we don't know how many people would have developed Alzheimer's without any drug. But it certainly supports the idea that GLP-1 type drugs are helpful in treating Alzheimer's disease. So if you're interested in the details, uh, you can download the papers from the, the web. And thank you for watching this little video clip. You can have a look at my personal website for some updates and news. And there's also a ResearchGate website where I have all my scientific publications that you can download for free. And I hope to talk to you soon.